Today I'm going to be starting on a project doing some fish tails, some scroll work using a couple of the tools that I showed in one of my videos that I made. I'm going to be making this for my, for my daughter. She has a, we mounted her TV on the wall and she ain't got nowhere to put her DVD player now. So we're going to try to make her a little decorative shelf to hang on her wall underneath her TV to hold her DVD player. What I'm going to be starting out with is a piece of 3 8 inch square stock. I've already got it heating up, getting it ready. This is a piece I had left over for something else and we're going to use it. I'll first get all my the parts and pieces that I, that I want, get them made, and then I'll go from there and see what else I'm going to need. Swapped over to to my ball peen hammer. I'm going to use it to spread out the end of my metal to start the fish tail. This time I'm going to use another tool that I made. This is basically another fullering tool. I'm going to use this to make the lines in the fishtail before I curl it. And another thing that you, you can use. I've got an old logging chain here. Comes in handy for when you need a third hand. Not this tight, so I'll put that on there. And just start hammering in my lines. I didn't make it perfect, which I, I myself don't really want it perfect. Now I'm going to heat that back up, <clears throat> and I'm going to start to curl the end of it. satisfy myself. And there we go. Now I'm gonna use one of the scrolling jigs that I showed in one of my in one of my last videos. Stick it in my vise. 
I stick my hot metal in there and I'll just wrap it around. Okay, when I take this out, I've got to cool down. I'm going to dip the end of it in the water to cool that fish tail down because I don't want it to straighten out whenever I go to wrap that around. Once I see it start to move, I need to heat it back up. Or you can feel it tighten up. Whatever it's whatever it gets starts getting to where it's not at the right temperature to, temperature to do that, then it's time to heat it back up. Let's try again. Now earlier I felt it starting to tighten up. Go ahead and stop and I'm gonna go go ahead and again. And I see it starting to tighten up again. Back in the fire. He just I just had to keep doing that over and over till I get it wrapped around right. Till till, till I get it wrapped around. Sometimes I'll stick something in there to help hold that. But I noticed that my fish tail I kind of pulled too hard and flattened it out. I'll take my scroll tongs and I'll fix that after I get this stuff part done. Now I'm going to heat that back up and I'm going to fix that fish tail where I messed it up. Now let's see if we can fix that fish tail. These are the scroll tongs that I made. There we go. Now, I ain't done with it yet. I'm going to heat it all back up again, and I want to straighten that out. You can see, it's not straight. Hey, you may notice I've got a stick of wood here. Well, that's what I'm going to use. I don't want to leave hammer marks in my metal this time whenever I go to straighten all that up. don't want to leave your hammer marks you're trying to and I'm trying to straighten something out that's what I'll use that's it's just no block of wood I had left over from when I was making a boat now I'll, I'll repeat that same process a few more times till I get what I need and then we'll start working on I'll start working on everything else that I'm going to need to finish it with and I used my ball beam hammer to start the fish tails, to make the fish tails in it, is because I want I wanted that metal to go out in all different directions. Like I was explaining on the fullering, when you're using a fullering tool, whenever you smack in the water, it makes the water go out to the side. Use the ball on the ball beam hammer 
and it's the same it's the same effect as if you take a rock throw it up in the air and when it hits water then it goes out in every direction but that's what I that's what I wanted that's why I use that so I have uh, I have most of the parts made that I'm going to use for the back of the shelf uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a few more things to go along with it as we go uh, right now I've, I've got a pretty good start going on it next thing I'm, go, I'm gonna do I'm gonna cheat on this just a little just because I can I'm gonna weld all this together and then I'm gonna go from what I've got to make the rest of it I'm making this up as I go so this is the design that I'm going with for the back of it. And I could take the time, which my forge ain't quite big enough to hold all that one time. I could forge weld this together, but I'm just going to weld it, just because I can. <laughs> and I don't claim to be a be a blacksmith. I'm, I'm a bladesmith, but I feel if a person is going to do bladesmithing, they need to know something about blacksmithing. It'll make you a better bladesmith. So that's what we came out with. Now I'll use that for the back and I'll come off somewhere over here and over here somewhere and I'll make the shelf come out. Add a few more things. Uh, I'm a thinking maybe she likes horseshoes, so I'm I might she likes horses, so I might make a couple of horseshoes and maybe some decorative leaves to go on with it too. But that's our start. That's what we're gonna start with.